What's up guys, Coach Nate here from The Run Experience. Today we're talking about cross training for runners. There's a lot out there, it's easy to get lost, so I'm gonna give you my six cardinal rules, my six do's and don'ts, so you can choose the right activity for the right purpose, whether it's working on strength, recovery, mobility, or anything else you need to improve your running. Let's dig in. Hey, thanks to Reebok and the Reebok Float Ride for sponsoring this video. Now, our whole team got a pair of these shoes to try out, and uh, we tried a lot of shoes on over here at the Run Experience, and one of the things that impressed me was that universally across the board, everyone said how comfortable the shoe was when they first went in, and it's always a good sign when that shoe fits and feels comfortable. Uh, so we know Reebok is definitely on the right track with this guy. If you wanna learn more about the Float Ride, click the link in this video or down in the description. Not only can you read reviews from runners who've tried them, get more on the specs of the shoe itself, uh, you have an opportunity to get a free pair by entering our giveaway. Uh, we also have a killer discount where you could get uh, a pair right now. If you don't wanna wait for the giveaway, that can happen too. Uh, so all that information is down in that link below. Again, thanks to Reebok. Let's go ahead and get into these cross training tips. All right guys, rule number one in cross training is to realize that not all cross training is the same. It may seem obvious at first, but a lot of times as runners, we just see the cross training with the X on our schedule and uh, we're kind of scratching our heads. We're like, what should we do? Is that running is, or running, you're already running, is that uh, riding a bike, is that you know going into a boot camp class or Pilates? So I wanna go into a few things just to give you some ideas here. Now I'm gonna go through a few activities here that are some of my favorites that can be helpful. So if I'm someone who's looking for more of a recovery day activity and maybe something that's a little bit more restorative but also works on a little bit of core strength and a little bit of mobility work, well hey, yoga would be a wonderful option. I can do a few different things there, right? Even, even a yoga DVD or a YouTube video at home, I'm sure there's some great YouTube videos out there. We come to think, we gotta make some ourselves. But even just going into say something like a little downward dog position, opening up those, that posterior chain, those calves and those hamstrings, opening up the hips this way, getting that big hip extension, and then coming forward into say something like a little bit of a pigeon style pose. You know, working through these different positions are so great. Integrating your breathing is fantastic. If you're looking for something that gets you focused a little bit more on your core strength from a pelvic floor standpoint and really working on all those little micro movements and hip stabilizers, runners, we really need that micro focus. Well, then something like Pilates would be wonderful. You could get on a reformer machine, you could take a class, or you could just work on some movements on the ground again where I might do something like a dead bug activity where I'm gonna have my arms and legs straight. I'm really focusing on keeping that pelvic uh, position nice and neutral. And at first, I'm just gonna try to lower this leg, whew, really slowly, making sure nothing changes, trying to breathe. If that's not too bad, I could add an opposite arm, an opposite leg motion here, and then I could start to work through some really, really slow controlled stuff there. Fantastic option for building that little bit. It doesn't beat me up too much. If I'm looking for something that is a little bit more whole body, still a lot of core, but just some bigger picture movements, well then I might wanna grab a pair of TRX straps. They're great, I can take them everywhere, come on over. And I can do a lot of different things with them. This is why these things are so great. You know, I could do a lot of different upper body ex exercises, something as simple as some sort of row. I could do some movement where I'm doing a little upper body ex this movement this way. Runners, we run with our upper body a lot, we gotta get into it. The other thing, fun things I could do with this is that I could get a foot in here as I try to figure this out. There we go. It's almost like I haven't done this in a while. Don't tell anyone. I'm gonna get myself situated here. I'm gonna keep my hips nice and square and I could drop this back knee to the ground and I could work on some sort of supported elevated lunge where I'm having to balance and stabilize a little bit that way. Um, I could use this for some sort of forward lunge where I'm kind of using my upper body a little bit as well to help me out as I go through this motion. And I could even get my feet in here for something like a plank or some kind of like hamstring curl as a way of building myself up. That is a fantastic way to go. But it is not the only option. In fact, one of our best ones for last is just the good old meat and potatoes of a barbell, a dumbbell, and a kettlebell. And if we come back over here, we could be in a gym situation like we are right now. We could work 
on something like a basic squat, setting ourselves up underneath here, working through some different air squats. I love this because not only am I externally loaded, I'm getting that real extra stimulus of that core strength there, but I'm going through a lot of range of motion here, especially in the bottom and really challenging my ankles, my hips, squatting, especially loaded squatting is so important for runners to be able to do. I could work on lunges, stepping back and work on a lunge here, loading up. I could take this bar, I could work on some sort of big press overhead. I could do a lot with this. Of course, I could do the same thing with a pair of dumbbells and a pair of kettlebells. Depending on how strong I am, I can just choose a different weight. These are great because all I need is a little floor space, not a ton of equipment, and I can work a lot. So this would be great if I'm looking for a little bit of a greater stimulus, a little bit of a longer workout. I wouldn't call it a restorative day, but it'd be something that'd be important for my running. So remember, not all cross training is the same. Pick your activity, pick your poison, depending on what you're trying to accomplish with your running. <laughs> hey guys, Coach Holly here, helping Nate out with the do's and don'ts of cross training for running. Number two is going to be, don't assume that cross training replaces running. Now, if you are someone who is just getting into running and you're just getting into this cross training as well, you'll notice this stuff is super effective. It gets the heart rate up, it gets you nice and strong, but at the end of the day, it isn't gonna get you necessarily to that start line of your race. However, since you're training so much now, there are gonna be probably days where you wake up a little achy, there's some pain in your ankle or knee, and this is when you can use that cross training to mimic the running, keep that heart rate up, get your workout in without overdoing it and pushing the injury on the running. So swimming is a good version of this. Um, getting on a bike, doing some water running, um, get on a rower. And the other thing is you can mimic the exact workout you were gonna do for running on that machine. So if I was gonna go do an interval workout, I can hop on the rower and I can mimic that in the same way. So do the same amount of push, the same amount of rest, try to get that in the same way, but you're not necessarily pounding the pavement the same way you would if you were running. All right guys, tip number three is do add whole body strength training into your routine. Anywhere from one to three times per week will be helpful to your running. And the reality is the more athletic and strong you can be in this, the better your running will be all the way through. So um, I like to do a bunch of different things here, but you can start super simple with a barbell. Uh, Nate showed us some squats and some overhead press, um, but I can show you a few other options for you. The first one being a deadlift. So I'm just gonna grab this barbell. This one's super simple, um, but it what it does is it challenges other muscle groups that you're not necessarily um, working on when you run. So a couple deadlifts here, just showing you. This is challenging the core and the back of the legs, the hamstrings and the glutes. Also helping you keep a nice straight back, which is something that we tend to let round over when we get tired during our runs. Something else you could do with this barbell, even without any weights on it, would be a strict press overhead. And what that's gonna do is just strengthen our shoulder position and our arm swing all the way through when we run. Sometimes that can fall short and this will just encourage a little bit of a stronger push on that arm swing. And there's a lot of options you can do here. Using that barbell, you can also use, of course, there's dumbbells, there's kettlebells, all kinds of stuff. Um, but just the reality is you wanna hit those muscle groups that you're not really doing when you run, when you just go out for that long run where you're kind of shuffling through. So mix up your strength routine one to three times a week and you'll be set to go. You know, when you were looking for a shoe that had a lot of cushioning as well as a lot of support, especially for those longer runs, you knew you were signing up for a shoe that was also heavy. It was kind of a clunker because of all that material that was extra on the shoe. Well, thanks to, you know, advancement in technology, especially something like the float ride foam that's in the shoe, uh, you get the best of both worlds because at 8.2 ounces, this shoe is definitely no clunker. I was surprised in just how light and responsive it felt on my feet, yet it also had that cushioning and that support that would work really well for some of those longer runs. So if you're curious about the shoe, go ahead and check it out. Hit the link in the video. Get that link down in the description. Uh, there's definitely some great stuff going on. Of course, let's get back into that cross training. So rule number four, don't add high intensity interval training when your running includes a lot of high intensity training itself. And the reason why is that these workouts are a great way to get a track or tempo like effort in where the heart rate's really elevated, you're really pushing yourself hard. But if you're already doing that with your running, it would be like getting two track workouts whew, back to back in the same day or back to back days. And we know that with running, 
We want to alternate hard days with easy days so that we can be balanced there. So if you're especially 10 to eight weeks away from a major race, you're going to notice that the training is going to be a little bit harder. It is a perfect time to, it's a lot of breath there, continue to add that strength training in, but we got to dial it back a little bit. Some of my favorite movements are some things we talked about in the beginning from the yoga and Pilates perspective, a lot of core work, things like side planks and different planks where, for example, I'm just here, you know, working on a side, working on a lot of my hip stabilizers, trying to pick this leg up and trying to be strong and stable here, working on single leg deadlift. It's one of my favorites. The guys here tease me at the gym because I do a lot of single leg deadlifts. I'm getting ready for a race right now. And uh, what I love about this is that I'm balanced on one leg. I'm getting a lot of foot strength here. I'm having to uh, really keep my hips balanced and stable. And then I'm working on hinging over and I'm getting a lot of hamstring and glute strength on this side while also learning to keep that back nice and flat. So just like uh, Holly was talking about in that deadlift part with the barbell, we can all do that on one leg and I can do the same thing with squats and lunges and everything else. So with those, I like to keep a little bit more mellow three sets, eight to 10 reps of all those movements, giving yourself longer rest in between, not high intensity, but still really useful. All right guys, our next tip is do add high intensity training into your routine during your off season of running. So maybe you just finished your big race, now would be a good opportunity to kind of push your athletic limits, kind of train yourself just as an athlete, not necessarily as a runner, and a good way to do that would be to jump in either a boot camp class where they're gonna create these workouts for you, or make a sort of circuit workout on your own that's gonna be high intensity, keep that heart rate up, but also challenge your different positions while you're not running as much. So a favorite of mine is a combination of rowing, some kettlebell swings, and some mountain climbers. The way this workout would be is you're gonna do five rounds total. You're gonna work for 90 seconds. You're gonna be 30 seconds big push on the rower, 30 seconds in your mountain climbers, and 30 seconds of your kettlebell swings. You'll rest 30 seconds, and then you'll go back in all the way through five rounds. I'm gonna show you an example of these movements. Obviously, you wanna be moving well the whole time here, so even though you're tired and the heart rate's coming up, you don't wanna lose positions. So, I will show you guys a little bit of each. We'll start on the rower. Assuming you've already done a nice thorough warm up, we've got lots of ideas on the channel. So I've got 30 seconds pushing on the rower here. Make sure I'm breathing as the heart rate comes up. Say I've done 30 seconds there, I'll jump off and I'll go into some mountain climbers. This will challenge the core as well as just keep that heart rate nice and high. Just like this. Try and keep those toes straight. Say I've done 30 seconds there, immediately I pick this kettlebell up. Nice good position. No need to pull the back here during your off season and go into those kettlebell swings to finish out this round. 30 seconds here. After that, I drop that. Total recovery for 30 seconds, catch that breath, let the heart rate settle, and then you're back on the rower for four more rounds. Final rule, guys, don't let yourself get stuck in a rut. It's so easy to keep up the same habits, go to the same classes, do the same workouts, but if you let yourself explore different things in that off season, not only mentally will you be a little bit more refreshed when you go back into your your running season again, but you'll be that much stronger and uh, you'll be that much smarter as an athlete because you've been exposed to so many different things. Some of my favorite things is getting onto a mountain bike, exploring different types of swimming workouts or yoga if I normally don't go. And uh, even a couple years ago, I started to mess around with something different here, just a different way to move the body and you know, have a little bit of fun doing it. So enjoy that cross training. It'll help you running a lot. See you guys later. Hey, thanks again to Reebok and the Reebok Float Ride for sponsoring this video today. And uh, if you want a free pair of these shoes, well, you have an opportunity to enter into a giveaway. All you need to do is click the link in this video or down in the description. And not only will you be able to do that, but you'll be able to get a killer discount for the shoes if you don't wanna wait and you wanna get a pair today. That can happen. Of course, you can learn more about the specs, you can check out reviews of other runners and see for yourself if this is a good shoe for you. Of course, if you like this video, let us know. Hit that like button down below. Any comments or questions, future video requests, anything you want to know from us, go ahead and drop that in the comments. We always like to have a conversation there. And of course, subscribe to our channel. We want you to be the first to get the new videos we're dropping each and every week on marathon training, strength training, 
5K, cross country, beginner, whatever you're looking for in running, we got something for it or we will film it soon. Guys, I'll see you in the next one. All right, guys, tip, no I'm sorry. <laughs> to help your running, whether you're looking for more strength or more mobility. I am struggling right now, my goodness. You know, when you used to were looking,